So Halo Infinite once again is relying on nostalgia to get you to play the game. Well, no sh Which would make sense as nostalgia, especially for the Halo franchise, is a very strong driver to bring people to play the game and get interested with Halo. For example, I'm sure many of you remember this amazing Halo CE armor set that came into the shop, which yes, I did chill out the money for it. Well, the nostalgia was so strong with this one in particular that it actually did an incredible on sales, right? Remember that when it actually jumped up 47 spots on the Steam charts when it comes to total sales for just the armor set alone. So nostalgia is a very big factor when it comes to people engaging with Halo. So why not capitalize on nostalgia once again when it comes to the gameplay experience of Halo Infinite? And you would think relying on nostalgia would get people to want to jump back in and play. You remember how popular that Halo 3 refuel playlist was? It was a huge success for Halo. So 343 probably thought, let's bring back that fan favorite mode people have been wanting since the release of Halo Infinite, put it back into the game to get people excited about playing it. That mode being Headhunter. Now you're probably thinking, ah, oh, boo, who cares about Headhunter? Well, one of the things that Headhunter was a very important mode when it came to the development of Halo Reach. Uh, they actually touted it as like one of the cool new innovations with Halo. Don't take my word for it. Here's the trailer that they showcased the game mode. Headhunter. It's so much fun. Like seeing a dude pick up skulls and then you cap him and seeing skulls fly out of his body and then the mad dash to pick those things up. And there's a lot of tension as you're amassing skulls. It's the risk reward of gathering up a lot and, and banking all at once, or just doing it one at a time and not being a big target. Headhunter. So bringing back Headhunter is kind of a big deal. The mode itself is definitely a great innovation when it comes to the free-for-all experience when it comes to your general first-person shooters because it adds an objective that also involves slaying at the same time, but you don't need to be a slayer to be able to win the game. In fact, if you score 10 skulls at one time, it's a skull in and the game ends. Could have been Reach's version of the tactical nuke from Modern Warfare 2, or you could just get the cumulative score of 25 skulls to be able to win the game. Which, this is great and everything. New things to do in Halo Infinite is always a good thing to have happen to the game, but is it really something to help move the meter in some kind of way? Is this gonna be something that makes people wanna jump back in and play like the Halo 3 refueled playlist was? Well, Headhunter went live in Halo Infinite back on August 20th. So let's see, like, did that move the player base at all? And looking at the infamous Steam charts, not really anything changed when it came to the player population. You can see right here, this was the day that Headhunter was released. The following day was actually just about the same amount of players playing. It didn't actually make any form of a difference. The only reason why you see a spike over here on the right side, because it's a Friday. Obviously, it's Steam numbers. It's a fraction of the population who actually play Halo but you should get a general idea of the trends of what happens with the player base. If something really popular happens and resonates well with Xbox players, most likely it resonates really well with Steam players and well, there wasn't a whole lot of resonating happening. But there was a weird thing that happened when they released Headhunter into Halo Infinite and that's that it was a free-for-all mode, but it wasn't able to be joined in with your friends. like traditional Halo was able to do so. Even though, yes, letting your friends join into a free-for-all match definitely lends itself to possible boosting, cheating, and things like that, but like I said, guys, like we just showcased you, the population really isn't quite there to really be a massive problem, I would say. So rightfully, a lot of players were let down by this update. And actually, 343 responded rather quickly just the next day, which is so odd to see that, like, that fast of a turnaround happens with such a drastic change to the player count it makes you kind of show that maybe they were kind of anticipating this pushback but it's showcasing right here on the Halo support channel saying that headhunter playlist went from one player to join in now up to four players can search in with a, as a party which is a great addition to this which is just kind of weird to like so quickly within 24 hours they're able to make this switch to be able to let people join in as a party but the weird thing is that it's been so long since Halo Infinite has been out to actually finally have Headhunter put into the game that it just seems like it's kind of just like whatever, nobody cares. But the thing is that like people want Headhunter. People already made it in Forge a long time ago. As you can see here in this Reddit post, you can see the gameplay that people kind of made Headhunter possible within Halo Infinite's Forge mode, which is um, shows the amazing power of Forge, but it also kind of shows about how slow the content turnaround is when it comes to anything related to 
Halo content and working within the Halo engine, the workflow over at 343 as well when it comes to just making things for players to interact with. Because that, that's the biggest thing about these type of updates is what can you do in it? What is different about the game now that makes you want to have to jump in and play? And a lot of times with, especially with these operation updates, they've been kind of lackluster, not really getting you super excited. They're like, oh, I gotta play now because this is in the game or this changed about it. But as we know, when it comes to anything Halo Infinite related, things can definitely be different just because it's in Halo Infinite. So how does Headhunter actually play within Halo Infinite? Well, I mean, there's only one way to find out. Now, really important thing also when it comes to just free for all modes in general, when it comes to Halo experience is that it generally is very underplayed. So adding a free for all mode into Halo Infinite probably wouldn't be the most engaging way to bring people back. So really a mode like this would never really be one to bring people back because it's a free for all mode. They tend to be underplayed most likely because I feel like the casual audience tends to struggle with like the concept of free for all within Halo in general. Oh my God, I'm getting lit up in the back and multiple angles and we're dead. Mainly because it takes a lot of bullets to kill players. And so it's very easy to steal kills, but that's kind of actually the strategy when playing Halo Free For All is that you kind of want to focus on players who are already in the middle of gunfights and taking damage to then clean those players up. People might look at it as a kind of being a vulture and kind of stealing kills kind of thing, but really it's more of a work smarter, not harder kind of thing. Like that right there. There we go. We got a bunch of goodies right here. Deliver these over here. Nope, we're getting shot. I can deliver them though. And just like that, we took the lead. Let's go. Also, it's interesting how in previous version of Headhunter, like in Halo Reach version, what I mean by previous version, that if anyone had a skull, you could see a marker above their head. In this game, not as much actually. In the recent community play live stream, they actually showed that like, I think if you have 10 skulls, then it actually would show on your screen, which is like a big concern because like that's the person who can end the game, right? So that actually might be a little bit of an improvement when it comes to just the general gameplay of Headhunter. I'm grab these little schooly schools right here. I'm gonna do a little deposit here. Boom, take back my first place. Oh, I got a few schools for me, thank you very much. I'll take those and a heat wave. There we go. But bringing back a mode like Headhunter really just, just kind of remind me like, man, if these kind of things were brought back into a Halo game during its seasonality, especially. People have gone crazy for it. They would have loved this extra bit of content. This would be a nice little extra update. Like, oh, hey, I remember playing Headhunter and it was a ton of fun. But I think people now with Halo, especially Halo Infinite, are just so jaded at this point. <laughs> oh my God. That uh, like something like this is more detrimental to the community rather than beneficial because it makes everyone kind of remember like oh what we could have had with this game which I think Halo Infinite will forever be that game I remembered as something that we could have had but it never actually got. Ooh, that's a little double it. Oh no, we cleaned up. There's so many skulls left over there. I'm also kind of curious about the gains when it comes to like XP and things like that with with this mode in particular, mainly just because oh my god, look at all these skulls, dude. Because if someone gets a skull in Manjaro, that ends the game, which I think I might qualify for right now. Oh my God, no, there's so many people that hate me. <laughs> but honestly, if you let people score, it might actually be beneficial when it comes to gaining Spartan points to get you to earn that haunted helmet. There, this guy has 10 skulls. You can see the kill marker above his head. He jumped off the map with him. What a sweaty. The SDMM is strong in this lobby, boys. I mean, good on him. That actually was the smartest play to make it in that situation that he was in. But it's like, bro, come on. But maybe grinding Headhunter would be the best way to earn your Spartan points if you're looking to get that Haunted Helmet, which I definitely need a lot of work to get to, which I really want that Haunted Helmet. And it was a huge step in the right direction to get that something that you can earn within the game. But goddamn it can be quite the grind. Because I'm currently sitting at just under 8,000 Spartan points and I need about 10 times that amount just to even get close to think about earning the Ghost of Reach helmet. So I got some homework, which is a great addition that 343 did to make it so then every game that you play after earning your initial challenge is set completed that you actually will continue to earn Spartan points the more you play. So there isn't that hard cap, which really set that grind out to be so much longer. Of course, obviously something like this is definitely designed to be like that long-term carrot at the end of the stick kind of thing. It's not meant for you to be earned like within just playing for a week or something like that. It's obviously that thing to get you to keep you come back and playing. But as we showcased earlier, like 
stuff like this hasn't really moved the needle whole much when it comes to player counts and player retention and things like that. I will say though, from the last match that we played, we saw some phase clan tags. We saw the sweaty move, right? Of jumping off the map when you had a Skull and possibility and stuff like that. Like it comes with the territory with a game like this, especially with the way skill-based matchmaking works within Halo Infinite now that like even in free for all and actually can be even sweatier than normal just because everyone is just walking in with their own level of skill oh come on meaning that matches can be even tighter than they normally are when it comes to team-based games i'll get them out of here we don't need that in my life right now i got that os we're good we're Gucci. I just hang out around the score zone and I'm able to just like get a bunch of skulls for the heck of it because it seems to be working. They recently buffed this uh, Sentinel Beam and it seems to be working. But let me know what your guys' thoughts or experience has been when it comes to skill based matchmaking in a mode like Headhunter, which is inherently a very casual mode within Halo. I don't think it's anything that really should be taken like super serious or very skill based in when it comes to their. Uh, algorithms and things like that but obviously that's going to play a huge part because i'm pretty sure they just use the same kind of matchmaking algorithms that they would use for regular team games in this as well but it probably would feel a bit tighter just because of it being a free for all that like each person in the mode is going to be based on your own experiences no that should have been a ninja so i'm saying you wouldn't have to worry about balancing out teams to carry and things like that because it's a free-for-all mode it's all based on just your own personal score and your own mmr and things like that i will say we're playing against a bunch of guys who had the hds codings as well as a guy who jumped off the map to play like perfectly right when it comes to strategy it's like it's one of those things like man i hate it it's definitely a sweaty maneuver and i wish it wasn't so but it definitely was the case. Or do you find yourself being excited about wanting to play Headhunter in Halo Infinite? Is it a mode that you love? Yeah, I know a lot of people have, it's kind of like a fan favorite kind of experience, right? Especially when it comes to this type of mode. For me personally, it's not really an experience that I would be super excited about wanting to jump back in and play. Like, yeah, it's fun. It's a nice little addition. Glad it's there, but it's not really gonna be anything for me that's gonna be like, oh my God, I need to jump back in and play Head Halo because Headhunter's back in the game, you know what I mean? Oh my god! I gotta go up to up this tower to get these skulls scored. There we go. And right here is the perfect example that kills don't get you wins because I finished 21 and 9 in that game, but finished in last place. So maybe if you're mint blitz and able to farm kills, it might be a good montage opportunity for you to play Headhunter. But yeah, Headhunter, it's fun. It's a nice mix up when it comes to free for all experience. It's actually probably one of my more favorite free for all modes with it ever made in Halo. Uh, but is this something that's gonna make me want to come back and play every single day? Not exactly, but. It's a nice addition. Uh, we'll see what happens when it comes to the next operation, next update with Halo Infinite. If so, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are as well. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.